It's so great to see your beautiful faces. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker this morning, and he's been here many times before. He is the youth pastor at my church, Hickory Creek in Frankfurt. So can you please give a warm Calvary welcome to Pastor Jeremy Dodge. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's good. Well, like Cassie said, uh, my name's Jeremy. I'm a youth pastor in Frankfurt, Illinois. I love doing youth ministry. When I was 12 years old, I was called into youth ministry by the Lord. This is what I love doing. It's my passion. It's my heart. So I'm excited to talk today. Cassie is also one of our youth leaders. Uh, she does an awesome job with our students, and uh, it's a blessing to have her a part of the youth ministry. Today, what I want to talk about is the word almost. Can everybody say all? Almost. 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 When you think of the word almost, you never really want to almost do anything, right? Who likes playing sports? Okay, right? You never really want to like almost make the three-pointer in basketball. You never want to like almost catch the football, but you don't, right? You never want to almost intercept the football or almost win a game, right? You want to win, right? Not almost. And when we think of the word almost, it's something you never really want to do. Have you ever seen any YouTube videos, like YouTube fail videos, where people just fail at things, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, for some reason, a guy's on like a motocross going down a hill, and he hits a cow or something, right? It's, just, it's crazy, right? He failed, right? Or the lady who was like in a bucket, squishing like grapes, and she falls on her face. I mean, these are things like, these are things that happen where people fail, and today, we're going to focus on a scripture today, and most of you have probably heard this scripture, but I'm just going to read it here, and it's Mark 12, 30. And you guys know this one. It says, love the Lord your God with all your what? Heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Some of you got those like mind, strength, you know, it's all over the board. But right, Mark, Mark, this is the scripture we're going to be focused on. If we break down this scripture to a deeper level... Basically, it's saying this is what it takes to be in a committed relationship with Jesus. I mean, a real relational, a real committed relationship. And when we think of the word committed, commitment, what does that bring? We're going to talk about a few things. It's going to, we're going to talk about how being committed to God is exclusive. We'll talk about that, talking about love. Being committed involves love. It, it involves trust. It involves honesty. It involves openness. And when we think of being a committed follower of Jesus, we look at this as when we say exclusive, that means we are serving Jesus and Jesus alone. And we're not letting any other small g God, right? Not any other uh, things in our life get in the way. Too many times we let the focus get away from God. We get caught up with our sports or our friends or even our families, or our boyfriends, or our girlfriends, or, or, ew. Now, majority of you are too young, so don't date. And those who are, don't date, okay? No, I'm just, I'm not telling you how to live your life, okay? But listen, we get caught up in these things, and you may not even be dating someone because you're all too young in my perspective. You're like, stop talking, my mom's here, okay? Okay? But... But we can focus on, maybe, maybe you're not, but maybe you just like that girl, you like that boy. No, it never happens. Okay, a bunch of liars. All right? But you get caught up in that and you focus on that. And there, Jesus, your perspective of Jesus and your focus on him is now gone. When we talk about a committed relationship with Jesus, we talk about love. We show acts of worship. We follow the Bible. We follow, who brought their Bible today? Anybody bring it? Cool, that's good. I challenge you more to bring your Bibles. I'm sure your Bible teacher Dan would like you to bring you more of your Bibles. All right? But sh listen, it's about love as well. But we don't always love God like we should, right? We don't. We fall short. All right? And another aspect of a committed relationship with Jesus is trust. You know, we... We are committed followers and we give him everything we have. Everything. We shouldn't worry about what's happening today or what's happening tomorrow, what's happening around us. Some of your best friends in here. Anybody got a best friend here? 
Wow. Man, that's awesome. Cassie is one of my, me and my wife's best friends. What? Yeah, that's crazy, right? I know it's weird to think your teachers have friends, but they do. They have lots of friends. But here, listen. Shh. But you all have that friend where you trust them. You guys talk about everything. You guys hang out together. You, you go through the good times and the bad times together, and you know what it's like to have them when no one else is around. That's what we have with Jesus. And it's about honesty. It's about openness. We're open and honest with Christ with the things that are going on in our life and the things we feel like we need to talk to him about that maybe it's guilt or maybe it's shame that we have to give to him. You know, some of us have that hard time opening up, opening up to what's going on in our lives, what's really going on, what's really bugging us. And, 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 but having that committed relationship with Christ, we have that option to talk with him openly. Let's look at another story in the Bible. Somebody who is looking this person was looking to be a, a committed follower of Christ. So open your Bibles, if you have them, to Luke 18, chapter 18, verse 18 through 21. It says, A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All, and, he, and this man said, All of these things I have kept as a boy. So here we have this man asking Jesus, what do I need to do to go to heaven? And I think we ask that question at least once or twice in our life, right? Like, Lord, what do I, what do I need to do to, to experience eternal life? What do I have to do to go to heaven? We all want that. We all want that hope because we kind of live in a crazy world. Who says our world's a little crazy? A little crazy. You're all a little crazy. It's okay. I'm a little crazy. Somebody up front said, hey. I'm just kidding. But listen, listen. Listen, we have this man, he's asking Jesus this question, and he's asking this question, and Jesus goes on and he tells him, you know the commandments, you know these things. And the man just says, I have kept all these things since I was a boy. This is how we think sometimes. Sometimes we think that, you know, we've done all these things, we've done everything to, you know, get to heaven. You know, I, I've gotten good grades in school. I've been, I've been really respectful to my mom and dad, and I clean my room, and I, I've been really good to my friends. And, and all these things, we, climb, we try to climb this ladder to get to heaven. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works with Jesus. And, and so the first thing I want to talk about, the first point that I'm making tonight, is you can do all the motions. You can do your chores. You can be a good person. You can be friends with everybody here. But you can do all these things. But that does not bring us to heaven. It's not. You can do everything you need to do. But it doesn't bring that. Look what Jesus says to him in Luke 18, 22 through 25. When Jesus heard him say this, it says, you still lack one thing. He says, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have your treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And when he heard this, the man became very sad because he was very wealthy. You know, I went, anybody like snowboarding? Yeah? Who's actually gone snowboarding? Yeah, it hurts. I mean, you fall a million times. It's, it's awful. Well, listen, listen, me and, shh, me and my group of friends, right? We're going snowboarding all day. And, and it, it's been a blast. And now we, we, we've been going down a bunch of different runs and hills. And it was, it was fun. I thought my, to myself, it was time to go. And I'm like, I'm going to go down one last hill, and it was like a double black diamond, which if you know what that means, it's not for me. It's not a hill I should be going down, okay? So I'm like, I'm just going to go down, and it was a real steep hill. Now listen, they made their own snow. This place made their own snow, and when you make snow wrong, it just becomes ice. So really all the hills are just ice. And I'm like, I'm just going to go straight down, and I'm going to cut it at the end, and I'm going to stop, and that'll be, my, and all my friends are watching, okay, Dodge, that's my last name, Dodge. Go and Go and go down this hill. Do, go ahead and do that. So I go down this hill, and sure enough, not paying attention, I hit a bump. I land right on my face. I scrape all the way down the hill. Now, I'm not talking like I just fell. I, I fell on my face. <laughs> all right? All the way down. I couldn't even stop myself. It was just like, <laughs> okay? I, got, I had scrapes. I was bleeding. I'm just like, this is the worst snowboarding trip ever. All right? And listen, I was missing something. I missed the focus. I missed that I should have gone around that one 
spot. I should have gone around that one little bump that threw me off. Right? I got another story about something I missed. When I was little, when I was little, I don't know, I must have been like five. All right? Little. Any, none of you are five in here. How old are you guys? Oh, we got some five-year-olds. Awesome. All right. So who's five? Okay. When I was your age, we were going to the zoo. Anybody like the zoo? I love the zoo. Okay. All right. So I'm in my house. And I'm all excited. I'm going to the zoo. And we were going with some friends. So our friends pulled up. And I'm like, I'm going to go outside. And so I start running to the door because I thought the door, like there's a storm door that's in front of the door, you know, the one with the glass. Okay, well, I thought that was open a little bit. And I ran as fast as I could in, right through that glass door. I got the scars to prove it. You don't believe me, I'll show you after, all right? I got scars all on my, because I went right through the door. Why? Because I missed the little latch. I missed the latch. I missed the most important part of the door, okay? So that is what I'm saying. This man in this story, he's missing, he's lacking one thing that is throwing him completely off, and it's the heart. The heart part of loving Jesus, giving every part, and he's missing the one part. And Jesus, he's saying basically, you know, you can have all of me, uh, but, but you have to love me with your heart. You know, sometimes we think, you know, well, Jesus, you know, you can, you can have all of me, but you know what? I really like how I dress. And I really like to dress my own certain way. Or Jesus, you can, have, you can have all of me, but I really like listening to this music. And I know it doesn't really glorify you, but, but I'm going to listen to it anyway. Or you can have all of me, but, but the whole church scene or youth group, that's, that's not for me. You know, we keep going through these. You know, you can, have all, you can have all of me, but I like watching that inappropriate show or that movie. Right? Right. You know, you, this is what happens. We think these things. You can, and, we, and even you guys think you can have all of me, but these friends who really aren't good for me, nah, Jesus, you can't have them. That's not what we can't do. We can't say, Lord, you can have all of me, but these certain parts, you know, you can't have. So the second point it's not, this morning is giving your all requires sacrifice and surrender. It's simple to say. But, but you probably heard this multiple times before, you know, I need to give everything to the Lord. I need to give everything to Him, and that's how I'll have eternal life. But that doesn't mean, listen, when we give everything to the Lord, does not mean you're going to be perfect. We're going to mess up. We're going to mess up a lot. But the difference is if we get back up and we strive for Him and we make a change, instead of just saying, Lord, this is off limits. So we see this question of where he's saying, who can be saved? Because now people are confused because here's this blessed guy. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of things going for him. And he's not going to the kingdom. And he's saying, who can be, who can be saved? And Jesus is trying to show everybody that those things don't matter. You need to trust the impossible. Trust God to work with the impossible. We sometimes feel as if we're, you know, we're accepted. Uh, we sometimes feel if there's no way God will accept me into the kingdom, into heaven. I've sinned way too much. I've had so much going on in my life. But they put their... But to put our entire trust in Jesus, he's going to do the impossible. He's going to take us who are broken, who have issues in our life, and he's, and he's going to restore us. He's going to bring us to a place where we have hope and we have peace, even within our failures. Now, the big question I have for you this morning is, does Jesus have almost all of you, or does he have all of you? That's what you got to meditate. Think through the things in your life. Does Jesus have almost all of us or all of us? Does Jesus have all of your heart or just some of your heart? Now, if you're sitting here, you can keep this in your head, but if you're sitting here, if you put your, in a scale from one to 10 and one is like, I'm like farthest away from Jesus and 10, I'm like everything I'm giving to Jesus, where do you land? Put that number in your head because you may be thinking, I'm a one, I'm a two, I'm a three. And let me tell you, Jesus will restore that and he will grow you closer if you seek him. Now, you may be thinking, well, I'm a nine. I'm doing good. But listen, that one point, whatever you're at of not giving to Jesus, that's the point where you need to focus on and give that over to him. Because there's a reason that, that that's an issue. There's, there's a reason that that limitation that you're pulling from God, that can become an issue. But tonight, if you're sitting here, or this morning, sorry, I speak on Wednesday nights all the time, so I say tonight a lot. But this morning... 
If you're sitting here and you're saying, man, I just, whether maybe it's a couple days, maybe like I said, you're super far away from the Lord, you're a one, or even if you're a nine, but that one thing is holding you back, this morning you can make that right with the Lord. You can talk to him. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. You may be sitting here tonight with something you're holding on to, something that you didn't want to give to the Lord this morning, but you're, you're giving him into a night. You're going all in tonight. Maybe it's a rough crowd of friends, or maybe you're kind of selfish, or maybe you haven't been really respectful to mom and dad, or, or something in your life is just not pure. And to, this morning, I want to challenge you to give that to the Lord. Talk with him. Let's ask for forgiveness. Let's, let's close our eyes. In the Bible... It shows us in Romans 10, 9, it says, If we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with our mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If you're sitting here tonight and you're recognizing, I need to give all that to the Lord this morning. Let's do that. Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this place. Lord, I pray for those in here who, Lord, maybe they're going through something, Father. They haven't given everything over to you tonight, this morning, but this morning they are giving everything to you, Father. Even the little parts that they decided not to tonight, this morning, they are going to give this all to you. Lord, I pray for those in here who feel like they don't know you, Jesus. I pray that they can see that you are the Son of God, that you came to this earth, that you died on the cross for their sins so that they could have eternal life, so they could have the hope that you give them, the hope on this earth and the hope for that time in heaven with you, Father. Lord, I pray that we can all strive to be more like you, that we can be all in, not almost in, but all in. And Jesus, we love you with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, with all our strength. Lord, we praise you. And everybody said... Amen. Thanks so much, Calvary. Hope you guys have a really good day at school.